so we're going to talk about the Hopewell Valley History Project. And here we go. Let me uh, reduce some stuff out of the way. Here we are. So um, I already said this part, but the message I want to mention right now is almost everything I'm showing you is not only on the site, but it's already been there for quite a while. So we're taking advantage of the stuff that's available. And this presentation itself, I will put up on the site in the very near future. So let's go. So for context and background, um, we're very lucky here in the Hopewell Valley. We have um, history all around us, the buildings, the places, the land, the parks. And we're also blessed with organizations and people who help preserve and share our history. So there's the organizations that are sponsoring this talk and libraries, there are joint activities like the Heritage Weekend. We have Trenton and Hunterton nearby, which have all kinds of fascinating records. And the municipalities are involved as well, the Historic Preservation Commission. And we have experts, we have professionals in preservation and architecture and archeology span who are volunteering their time and doing professional work in this area. So why do we need another group? Well, um, where did this come from? So a little background. So this all started last summer. We were involved in the Hopewell Library house tour and the um, garden tour, and that raised some historical questions we wanted to dig into. And then you immediately run into the problem of how do you get started? Where do you go? Who do you talk to? What are the key things that you should know about? Where do you go find them? So we started figuring all that out. And in the process, we were building lists of where to go find stuff, we were going online and finding stuff. We were going on road trips. So we went down to the Hopewell Township offices and we shot images of the tax maps back to 1915, for example. And we were in Trenton at the State Library and the State Archives. And we were building a digital collection of useful information, which led to the you know, conclusion, hey, let's have a party, let's make a website, let's make this open and available and invite others to join us in this process. So specifically, what is the project? First of all, it's a volunteer effort. There's no official organization. It's just a bunch of people working together. What we're doing is collecting and organizing the kind of information you want to have at hand if you're looking into history questions. We're doing this all digitally so we can share it online for open and convenient access. That's what this is all about. And as a byproduct, we're helping to discover materials that weren't known about before and preserve materials. So for example, there's a document from 1960 that one person on the face of the planet knew about. And he happened to be leaving our area and I happened to be talking to him. And now we have that document scanned up on the site and the original is preserved at the museum. So if you know of other such documents, please tell us about them. And that's a recurring message here, in case you won't notice that later. So um, what is the project explicitly? Well, it's actually three websites serving three different purposes. And I'll tour this in the second half. The first is the Book and Maps Archives, the main site, which has over 150 books and maps and other materials available one click away basically to search and to browse and all that. Then there's the image archives because searching images is a different project, different kind of task. And this has over 850 images plus a bunch more as you'll see. And then the third is the Hopewell history map. The idea here is once you have a bunch of documents about sites and houses and you have a bunch of images of those sites and houses and those are linked by address, wouldn't it make sense to use an interactive map to explore all that? And that's what the history map is about. Okay, so what are in all these archives? Well, we have a bunch of entire books in PDF formats. We have a bunch of pamphlets and booklets from local community activities, fire department, library, school, etc. And if you have more, we wanna know about them, please. 
we have various municipal reports, we have uh, some of our own research projects, and then there's a whole bunch of maps, which is a whole nother topic that I will be brave and not get into today, except you'll see examples of each of these kinds of maps here today. Then there's the image archives. These also come from various pamphlets and books and calendars that we've digitized. And then a lot of these images come from local postcard collectors. It turns out there's an active postcard collector club in the area and a bunch of local collectors, uh, many of whom have hundreds if not thousands of cards. And these people are, have been just wonderful about being happy to share their materials with us. And so the, the vast amount of material up on this site is postcards from these collectors. And this image archive just wouldn't have been possible in the same way without their support. It's just really exciting how local people are reacting to this. So the bottom line on what we're trying to do and is on the bottom of this page, we're providing direct access to stuff. So we're assembling it together, putting it in one place. We are curating it because if you're gonna go through all this work, you might as well make it as accessible as possible. So we select the best example of a map, we'll do scanning, we'll do text recognition so that you can search We'll do some editing. We'll add a table of contents, if that makes sense. And we're also tagging images. So they're not just a whole bunch of images. They're tagged by address and content. And then finally, again, for accessibility, we reduce the size. So if we have some huge map that's at high enough resolution to print wall posters, we will reduce it. So it's still readable, but it's much faster to download. And the goal here is you can walk around town with your smartphone, you can go to the website, you can tap, tap, download, and then view the historic map as you're standing in front of the building. So we're not a museum archive, we're not the final source for any of these things, we're collecting digital copies and digital information, okay? So that's the message. So let's look at an example of this. So if you're interested in some site or historical topic or general idea, you need to sort of follow the same process. And so let's go through that process here. Our example is the story of the public library in Hopewell. And here, as in other cases, you have some basic story, some general idea, but you wanna drill down find out what the actual truth is, find the sources for that information, find out exactly when and where and how things happened. Okay, so we'll look at a variety of sources. We'll look at books, we'll look at newspapers, and we'll look at the other sources available on the site and see what we can find out. And in many cases, you'll find a pretty good story that you can do from home, <laughs> visiting a website, searching information. And then, of course, if you want to dig further, you can because you'll have a much better story and you can go off and find the specific deeds for when the building was purchased and things like that. So case study, you start with some story. So um, this is one of my diversions into more history, just because I couldn't stop myself. So we're talking about the Hopa Library, which was founded in 1914. Of course, there were other libraries in this area, and particularly the Pennington Public Library was founded in 1875. But we have hints, small hints, of a whole bunch of other library-related activities because apparently people like books and libraries, it turns out. So we know of a Hopewell Library Company in Pennington and a Hopewell Columbian Library, because Hopewell was much called Columbia, both of which were uh, incorporated in 1806. And we have little bits of evidence around that time as well, but we really don't know much about this at all. We know the state had a public library commission that had traveling libraries serving underserved areas in the early 1900s. We know of two private libraries in Hopewell alone and would love to know about more. Um, one map that you'll see in a moment, the Fowler map, says that Mrs. Carter had a library. We know nothing more about that. And we have a broadside from uh, Mr. Dalrymple, who was uh, very active in Hopewell Borough and apparently in his spare time loaned books out of his house as well. Uh, 
and again, we don't know anything more about that. Uh, there were schools around, Sunday schools and public schools, and they had some libraries. And then at the bottom here in the picture here, it turns out there's a commercial membership library company founded in 1902 that set up kiosks, sort of like those red DVD kiosks that you see around. But these were in drugstores and markets and things like that. And you would join the library and then rent books. And we have ads in the Hopewell Herald from around 1910, where Brownler's uh, Hopewell Cash Market was advertising the Tabard Inn Library. So just fascinating, the range of activities that were going on around books and libraries. But well, let's get back to Hopewell. And so the way you dig into any topic on the history of this area is you start with this book. This book is Hopewell, A Historical Geography by Richard Hunter and Rick Porter. Um, these two uh, worked on a project surveying historic sites in the entire Hopewell Valley area that was organized by the Hopewell Township Historic Sites Committee in 1984-85. And they surveyed and documented over a thousand sites, historic sites in the Hopewell Valley area. And we now have the documentation up on the site. So if you're interested in a historic site uh, pre-1875, uh, it's probably written up and probably available on the site. And I'll show you some extracts from that as we go forward. So this book looks at the Hopewell Valley from a number of different perspectives. And it does talk about the library a little bit in that the library merged with the museum in 1924, and then a half century later broke off and took up residence in the current building, which is a former bank building. So that's, that's a basic starting point story. The other place you can go for stories is um, newspapers. So the good news is we have two local newspapers, the Hopewell Herald, hyper-local to Hopewell Borough, and the Trenton Evening and Sunday Times, which also had quite a bit of regional coverage with feature articles and photographs of uh, local area, including uh, Hopewell and others. Um, these are available online, but they cost money. So you can get the Hopewell Herald through newspapers.com, which is an ancestry company if you happen to have an ancestry subscription already. And the, the Trent Times is available from Genealogy Bank. These will cost you eight to $10 a year, $100 a month. Um, but you can search, read, and download articles, which is great. Um, the caveat is, besides the cost, that there's a bunch of them missing their entire years of the Hopewell Herald missing, their entire issues issues missing, and um, they also are missing pages, including many of the front pages, which is unbelievably irritating, obviously. And um, the scan quality is not great, as you can see from the examples here. So the text recognition will fail, so searching will not necessarily find all the references. But you get some really interesting background from what people are writing at the time when you do this kind of research. So let's look at the starting point, the original story of the Hopewell Public Library, so that we can try to reconcile it, okay? So this is the story that was handed, handed down at the Public Library and then documented on the old website in 2015. Let me step through this because we're going to step through these four uh, places where the library was located in town. So the library was founded on March 14, 1914 at Broad and Mercer Streets in what was formerly a harness shop and is now the pizza store. So that's interesting. Then a month later, excuse me, a year later in spring, uh, the library moved to Fireman's Hall on Seminary Avenue and the children helped move by carrying the wagons and books, the books and wagons, excuse me. So that's, that's a nice story. And then seven, eight years later, the library tried to buy the current building where it now is, 13 East Broad, failed to buy it, and instead bought 
the current building where the Hopewell Museum is and took up residence there with the museum. And then in 1965, the library split off from the museum and moved to its current location, which is an old National Bank building. Okay, so that's a story. Uh, the first two steps here are missing precise locations, so it'd be nice to figure that out. And the latter ones are missing precise dates, so that'd be nice to figure that out. And of course, when you're talking about stories, very often there's more than one version of a story. So here's a second version of the same story from a 1946 chronology. And you can see the document up here. So this was a handwritten and typewritten document for a PTA meeting in 1946 when Hopewell was honoring Eleanor and Susan Wirt. Now, Eleanor Wirt was the original librarian for the Hopewell Public Library and held that job for decades. Her sister Susan was the original curator of the Hopewell Museum and held that job for a long time as well. And in this document, which the museum and library have copies of, are, um, are, is this chronology, which we're probably going to pay attention to because the words live this. And this chronology says the library opened on March 18th, not the 14th, and it opened in Mr. Harrison's office. So maybe that was the same place or maybe not, we'll have to find out. Then it has a full date for the second stop, March 15th, the library moved to Fireman's Hall and it gives a location next to Shanks Market. And then it says, the library bought the building in 1924 to move in with the museum, but the library didn't actually move till January 25. So let's dig into each of these locations following this trail, looking for supporting documentation, okay? And just for yucks, just for fun, um, here's the story of the Pennington Library from the book Pennington Profile by Margaret O'Connell. This book was republished by the Pennington Public Library in 1986. And in here are fascinating echoes of similar stories. So the, both libraries had something to do with the National Bank building. Both libraries shared space with a fire company. Both libraries had something to do with a phone company and both had something to do with a harness shop, which is just not exactly what I expected when I read that. So there's a fascinating story there as well, and if somebody wants to dig into that, that would be wonderful too. But let's continue on with Hopewell, and let's start walking through these sites. So site number one is the harness shop, um, and the Wart chronology says the library opened in Mr. Harrison's office. So what do we know? Well, we can go to the newspapers and see what they say. And the Trenton Times, the first entry here, agrees the opening was Wednesday, March 18th. So that's good. The Trenton Times also tells us the library opened in Joe Harrison's harness shop. So we've connected those and now we know his first name is Joe and the books were kept in the cases uh, where Joe was exhibiting his harnesses. And then we have this lovely story. John Armstrong, the grandson, painted a sign for the front of the library, which was in his grandfather's harness shop at the corner of Broad and Mercer Streets. Okay, and we actually have what looks like a photo of that sign. So hold on for a minute, I'll show you that. So how do we locate something in, in the Hopewell Valley? we go to the maps. And so for example, this is a Sanborn fire map. So what are fire maps? Well, Sanborn and other companies were third party companies who surveyed entire towns and built maps of the buildings so that fire and companies could then write insurance on those buildings. And so they were focused on the shape of the building, the construction of the building, how flammable it was obviously, and what business was going on in that building. So here we have, I'm gonna move the cursor around, the corner of Broad and Mercer. So horizontally at the top is Mercer Street, at the bottom is Broad Street. We've zoomed way in on this map obviously. This is this really 
interesting situation at the corner of Mercer Street. This is the current pizza store in Hopewell, and this little stream piece of the Beedenbrook actually runs under the store, as it apparently did in 1902, and then off under Broad Street. And so what does Sanborn say was here in 1902? And the answer is, he says, the Sanborn map says, this is the harness shop, not the pizza shop, this is the harness shop on Broad Street, okay? So that's pretty definitive by itself, but we can do better. So there are other images up on the website, so let's go look at another image. So this is the Fowler map of Hopewell from 1887. T.M. Fowler was basically an itinerant map maker who went from town to town. He was all over Pennsylvania, also in Jersey and elsewhere. And he'd come to your town and build three-dimensional perspective panoramic bird's eye view maps of your town. And he did not have a drone and he did not have a balloon. He did it all out of his head. So it's just amazing work. And for example, if you want to look at his map of Trenton, it's just extraordinary, the amount of work he did. So this is a Fowler map. And this is that same intersection. So uh, vertically here is Mercer Street, horizontally here is Broad Street. And Fowler identified some of the buildings on here. So this is number 13, which is a Grange Hall. This is number 12 over here. And this is number 14. And so what did he say? What did Fowler say these buildings were? Well, this building here, which is now the pizza shop, you see the streams coming in in two pieces as it still does, meeting up here and then flowing under the pizza shop. This building, Fowler says, is J.H. Piggott's agricultural implements. And we actually have a photo of that. So this is Piggott's agricultural implement shop, circa 1890. And you can see the front of this building and you can see Fowler seems to have echoed that here. So what is number 14 on the Fowler map? Well, Fowler's very clear about it. He says number 14 is J.C. Harrison, Joe Harrison's harness shop. Okay, so this sure seems to confirm the Sanborn map and say this is the harness shop. So this is where the library started. And we don't have a picture from that time but we do have a documentation from the site survey I mentioned early. And that uh, photo from the site survey from 1984 shows this building as it then stood. So we believe this was the harness shop and therefore this was the library. So we can actually go to the documentation and read about these as well. You know, it's more fun visually to do maps, but let's go read as well. So, uh, sorry about the run on text, let me just summarize. So the Cultural Resource Survey says that this building we've been looking at as the harness shop was the Blackwell Harness Shop and had a long history as a harness shop. Another book called Hopewell's Past that was done by Betty Gantz, um, we've also scanned that with the support of her family and have it online as well, talks about the history of the, Sarnoff, uh, the harness shop uh, the Blackwell connection, the Phillips connection, and uh, Gantz actually had the deed that connected all these names together, including Harrison and Armstrong. So that's sort of cool. And then later in her book, she talks about the Fowler map, and she says, yes, number 14 was the Harris, Harrison Harness Manufactory, and that was on West Broad Street. Now, interestingly, um, the Gantz book is a collection of newspaper articles that she wrote over um, eight some years, I think. And in the book, depending on when she wrote about it, she admits that it's not exactly clear where that Harrison shop was. And at one point she says it was on Mercer Street in the old bakery, which is now the pizza shop. And then later she says, well, we're not exactly sure. And then later she says, oh yeah, it's definitely number 14 here. So we can see this confusion um, coming out in Betty Gantz's work in the 1980s. So that's enough about site number one. We were pretty comfortable there. So where was site number two? It was the Fireman's Hall somewhere on Seminary Avenue. And according to the Wart chronology, it was somewhere next to Shanks Market. 
So let's go to the newspapers. And the newspapers, the Hopewell Herald actually has the story about the little boys with their express wagons. So that's where that story came from. And the Trent Times agrees the library was on the second floor of the fireman's hall, which makes sense. And how do you locate a building like that? Well, you go to the maps, right? You all should know that now. So here's another Sanborn fire map, this one from 1912. Here's Seminary Avenue working vertically. Here's East Broad Street. Here's the uh, large building, now the inn on the corner. And then right here, what does the Sanborn map say? It says 2B Fire Station. So that's the fire station there. This building here we know eventually became Shanks Market. And so that sounds pretty good. But wouldn't it be nice to have a picture? So yes, we do. So it turns out if you scan lots of community documents, you end up things with things like the fire department anniversary booklets. And in their anniversary booklets, they do a history of the fire department. And in there is this wonderful photo of the first chemical engine of the fire department, HFD, Hopewell Fire Department, at the firehouse at Seminary Avenue. So this is the building. Now the trick here is to notice that this here is Seminary Avenue, Seminary Avenue. So we're looking at the side of this building. We're not looking at the front of the building. And actually, if you stand here and look across the street, I think you'll recognize that building across the street as well. So wouldn't it be great to have a photo of the front of this building? Well, as you can guess from the big white space here, we actually do. So the Trenton Times ran this photo several times around 1915, uh, showing the Hopewell Free Public Library as they wrote feature articles about it. And you notice at the bottom here by the door is the sign presumably the sign that we read about earlier, the Armstrong grandson sign. And what does it say? It says Hopewell Free Public Library. So that's just wonderful to have. And then here's that building today, still surviving, still part of Seminary Avenue, which is not a building, not a street known for its grand architecture, but the buildings are still there, the history is still there, and that's part of, again, what makes the Hopewell Valley so wonderful. So, uh, that's site number two. Let's move on to site number three. This is merging with the museum and moving into the museum building. Now this story is, uh, how do we say it, sort of lengthy and messy, so I'm just gonna do the highlights and just do the chronology here. But it's, it's a fascinating demonstration of how much towns and people wanted libraries and the efforts they were willing to go to and the money they were willing to spend to make that happen. So, what, five years later, six years later, the library was running out of space in their second floor of the firehouse and different people were volunteering to donate artifacts to the library. In other words, turn it into a museum. So in May, 1921, sort of like our current Heritage Weekend, uh, the library and the town organized a week long fundraiser. And here's the booklet that we still have from the fundraiser. This is in the library and in the museum as well, including a historical pageant and all kinds of fun stuff. And then in February 92, a separate fundraising organization was incorporated called, believe it or not, the Hopewell Free Public Library and Museum Funding and Building Association. And that name stuck with the museum until it eventually spit off with the library. And, and then a month later, the association bought the National Bank Building not the museum building, they bought the building where the library is located now. And apparently they sort of bought it on spec. And then for a period of over a year, year and a half, the town argued about what to do with this building. Because here's the building at the time, it was occupied by the post office and the phone company. 
It was arguably not really big enough for a library. It certainly wasn't big enough for a library and museum. There was long discussion about should we uh, fundraise to expand it? And then this whole long discussion was finally resolved when Hugh Smith, the owner of the building that the museum is currently in, offered to sell his property for this purpose. Okay, so we're now in October 1923, and we jump forward to April 1924, and the Library Museum Association purchased that house in April 1924, and the museum immediately moved in because they already had a bunch of artifacts in a bunch of people's houses, and they just wanted a clean house and get it all together. But it turns out the stout chronology is correct. The library did not actually move in to until January 1925, and they shared the bottom floor. So here's several images from the collection that show this building. This is the original residence of Smith, how the house was originally built as of 1909. This is how Smith expanded the front of the building with this incredible front porch and uh, what it looked like when the library and museum were there together. And this is the building today as the Hopewell Museum and the front was restored to the original. And here's a Sanborn map showing the building as the free public library with that extensive front porch on it. Okay, so that's site number three. And then site number four is, at this point, is a gimme by comparison. The library split from the museum and moved to this old National Bank building. And here's some images from the collection. Here's the original bank building, circa 1897. Here's the bank building with the ivy starting to fill up the front now as a post office. And here's the public library today. Okay. So that's the story of the public library. That's the end of part one. And so, Kim, if you've been collecting questions, now is the time to fire them off. So we basically have the four locations. We have dates, we have firm locations, and we have pictures in many cases of what these buildings looked like at the time. So we're really happy with this so far. Thank you so much, Doug. What a fascinating story. I always find it so interesting looking into history of libraries. And because we are a library, I really appreciate your little research there for our library as well. <laughs> 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 and it seems like there's a large dependency here on the Sanborn maps and the Fowler maps. Uh, Robin asked, she said, I don't know if I'm missing anything, but where am I? where do I find these maps? Are they on then, Doug? I'm presuming they're on the hopewellhistoryproject.org site. Yeah, that's part two. I'll show you where to find those maps and I'll show you what they look like. So to some extent we're cheating, we're doing a public building here, so it's more visible that way, but you can also use these maps to find other buildings that are private residences, as you see in the Fowler map here as well. Yeah, this is a very extensive project and you mentioned that it's been put together by an entire group of volunteers. Can you detail a little bit about that process and the number of volunteers involved to put this together? Yeah, there's a small group of us who are um, pushing the hardest to make this happen. And then there's a bunch of people who are helping out, uh, doing research, um, providing advice, helping to identify images and postcards, for example, that kind of thing. And the site actually has an acknowledgments page where we explicitly acknowledge uh, 10 plus people, I think at this point, um, who have contributed images or documents or resources to the site. So that's going on as well. We've also had impromptu get togethers where we all sit around a map or sit around an image and try to figure out what all those houses are. So it's, it's an ongoing process. The churches have helped uh, and other groups have helped as well. It's wonderful to see the community effort. Mm -hmm. Now you said that you're looking for volunteers. What are you looking uh, specifically for volunteers to do? 
So I promise I'll get to that at the end. But no yeah. problem. No problem. Find um, stuff and help identify <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yes. And figure out stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Nancy Kennedy has a little comment. She says, just a tip, newspapers.com and newspaperarchive.com each offer free trial periods. That's her little tip. Oh, that's clever. Yes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> yes. And Katrina has a few questions about the site itself and the digitization process. Mm -hmm. She wants to know if you've run into any issues with copyright during this process and what content management system are you using? She has a lot of questions, actually. I'll stop there for now while you answer that part <laughs> portion. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a technical version of this talk that drills into that some more. Yes. Yeah. Um, most of these materials are out of copyright or displayed with the permissions of the authors or the families, the descendants of the people who prepared them, um, or they're in public documents of various sorts. So yeah, we're not posting copyrighted works and we're not posting current works, but we're scanning what we can, where we find it. And then the, the files are online in a, a custom database basically, and I'll show you how you can access that. Okay, so she does go into detail. She's obviously asking very specific questions, uh, archival questions about control mm -hmm. vocabulary and metadata scheme. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can touch upon that in the second half of this presentation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're not a museum. We're not the final archive of any of these things. We're just mm -hmm. producing digital copies and we provide links back to the originals um, so that you can chase down the gory details should you want to. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good to know. Sheila wants to know what happened to the HVN archives? HVN? Oh, Hopa Valley News. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's paper copies of the Hopa Valley Herald around, but uh, the library and museum, uh, excuse me, the museum and the historical society have them, um, but they're very fragile. I'm not exactly sure where all the Hopa Valley newses are, and um, it's an ongoing project to try to make sure we have as complete collections of these somewhere as we can. Okay. Kathleen wants to know if anyone knows if the Stout House was built by Kunkel because it looks like the homes on East Delaware in Pennington. Yeah, I don't have that at hand right now. There is the site survey document for that, which you can get to through the site and you can get through through the map and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. So uh, that may have some of that kind of information on it. Otherwise, you can contact the museum archivist through the museum website and ask that kind of question. Okay. Marge wants to know if you've scanned entire books for the project. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever wow. it takes. Right. Wow, what, mm -hmm. what a wonderful resource for mm -hmm. the community. Thank you. And Rebecca has a comment. Um, she just thinks it's a delightful chronology. Um, she's struck by the similarity of your research to that of genealogical research, using public documents and newspapers to connect the dots of special events in the history of the library. And she was wondering if you were interested in filling in the blanks about the people that were involved too. Were you focused on yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, um, when you start talking people, you get into a whole nother area of things. And so we've been mostly focusing on buildings and names of people associated with buildings. There is plenty more to do, though. There's no question about that. But um, this is where we are right now. Wow, sounds like the, mm -hmm. the options are limitless. <laughs> yeah, it's scary, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it is, it is uh -huh. pretty daunting, but yeah. it's very impressive. Thank you so much, Doug. And I think that is it for now. If anyone has any okay. further questions, feel free to continue typing to me, and I will ask them at the end of the program. Okay, so let's go live and show you where to find this kind of stuff on the websites, okay? So this is the main site, hopewellhistoryproject.org. Um, and down at the bottom is a link to my email address. So you can contact us through this email address. 
if you just want quick updates about the site, go to Facebook, of course, and we have a blog as well up here at the, in the main menu. So if you come to this site and you want to go to somewhere specific to jump right in, these links right here at the top will take you there. Go to the books, go to the maps, go to the images, go to the map, the history map. You can also use the menus to go places if you like menus. And over here in the about menu is actually, heaven forbid, documentation <laughs> about these things if you're one of those few people who actually read documentation because otherwise it's more fun to just play, right? But the other thing I did was this main page just scrolls down and provides direct access to all the different components of the site. So let's just scroll down and go directly, okay? So the first thing on this site are reference guides. So if you wanna know what documents are available, what maps are available, and you want uh, specific information about them, that's what these documents will tell you. And of course you can read them online, you can print them out, use them for a dartboard or whatever you want. So here's the books gallery, so I'm gonna click on this. So here's a document with some information about those pamphlets that we were using for pictures. Here's information about early historic books of the Hopewell Valley, including atlases and that kind of thing. Here's mid-century books, <coughs> excuse me, about the Hopewell Valley, including the Betty Gantz book. And then here's more recent books, including Pennington Profile and uh, the cultural resource surveys and things like that. Um, also in here are links. So here's how you can download the book. And um, over on the, uh, and then also in here are notes as to where you can find them, the Hopewell Museum and the Hopewell Library, okay? So uh, that was a quick tour of reference guides. Uh, speaking of maps, if you want to, <coughs> excuse me, dive right in to a specific area, so we have Hopewell Township, Hopewell Borough, Pennington Borough, and this site it breaks out Titusville Washington Crossing as a separate area because there's enough material available for it that it really needs to be separated out. So this page is called the Hopewell Valley Places page. And this takes you um, to inf directly to information for the township, for the boroughs, et cetera. So the first part of this entry, it shows an example of a particular site in that area. So this is Pennington Presbyterian Church. So you can jump directly to information about it. And then there's, you can jump directly to the image gallery. You can jump directly to the cultural resource surveys for Pennington, and we have a thousand pages covering 200 properties in Pennington, uh, in case you're interested. And then there's this um, historic maps section that we'll go to next. So this is historic town maps of Pennington Borough, and this is um, the maps that are currently available. So this is the oldest map that just shows Pennington in the larger context of the county. This is an early map of Pennington, the post office. This is a nice map of Pennington, the town. And with all these maps, you can click and zoom in and see all the detail right there as well. And then we also have the, a Fowler map for Pennington and we have a bunch of fire insurance maps for Pennington. So all of these are right here, just click and go right there. Okay, and we have similar ones for the, the other municipalities. So that's places and maps. Then if you keep scrolling down, this is the book and map archives. This is the main content of this site. So here are, it says 163 entries which are the current number of maps and books and other materials here. You can drop down the filter control and just see books or just see maps, for example. And you can use the search box over here on the right to search for a specific thing. So I'm gonna look, search for Faden maps, F-A-D-E-N. And here are the three Faden maps. And there's in 
the different columns here take you different places. You click here on the left to just view that thing right now. So click there, there's the fade and map. Zoom in, see the detail of our area right here, Hopewell, Pennington, Princetown, etc. The middle one, if you click here, this on the title, it takes you to a page with a little more information about the site, but we don't have all the possible information. We just summarize it here because if you want the full information, that's what the right-hand column is for. This is the source column, and this takes you to Princeton University, which is a source of this map, and here's the full entry in the Princeton Library about the map and versions of the map you can download and explore. Okay, so that's the main portion of this site is these archives of books and maps. Also on the site are the image archives and the map, which we'll do in just a second. And then the other thing you can use to explore the site is the blog. So if you click up in the main menu, it'll take you to the standard blog posts, but I've also put the blog here in tables. If so, if you happen to like tables, you can use them here. So it's easy to just sort of glance through and see what the recent things are. So the fire map came up, the fire department map came up here, for example. And again, you can search. So if I'm interested in aerials, I can go to um, here and here's some Hopewell Borough aerial panoramas. So I click here, here's a bunch of panoramas shot from a drone. I click here and here's a panorama of West Broad Street and you can zoom in and pan around. And this is that same intersection we were looking at where the original harness shop and the original source of the library was, but how it looks today. So here's Mercer Street going uh, ver vertically <laughs> and Broad Street going horizontally. And we have uh, a building in the distance. We have the red building, which is the current pizza shop. And then the building on the corner on Broad Street is uh, the harness shop and the library location. And of course we shot these before spring and before all the leaves filled in. So you can actually see through the trees in Hopewell, okay? So again, that's the main site. It's mainly the archives, the blog, and then uh, reference material as well. So let's take a quick trip to the image archives and then finish with the history map. So to get to the image archives, you click just right here at the top of the page. And this is a standard image archive. You can click to see things. You can step through images. You can change the sizes. You can do slideshows. What's important about this is how it's organized. So first it's organized by our four communities, Hopewell and Pennington Borough, Titus Washington Crossing, and Hopewell Township, and then Hopewell Borough, for example. It, the individual images are organized by address. So this is nine Blackwell here at the top, and then the next row is 10 Blackwell, and then we scroll down, we see 13 Blackwell, we scroll down, we see 14, et cetera, down to here, and this is 20 Blackwell, the original Methodist Episcopal Church in Hopewell as of 1909, okay? And then as we keep scrolling, uh, you see multiple versions of this image because this image was reused again and again on multiple postcards. And you see a second image, which is a side view of the same building. And then down at the bottom, you see a recent drawing of what has happened here. So this is the original church building on the left with the steeple removed, and then they built a connector, and then they built the new church. So this is the building as it stands today without the steeple on it, okay? So as we build up more and more houses and we identify them by address and we identify them by year, we can now scroll down the street. We can walk down the street as we scroll and we can move through time as we look from one image to the next to the next. So this is a really, useful way to explore around. But 
wouldn't it be cool to have it on a map? So that's the next step. And so I'm gonna finish with the history map here. So the Hopewell history map, I'll click up here on the top right, is um, a vehicle to bring together documentation on places and images of places on a map. And so this is an experiment, it's a prototype um, using the Google Maps background. So you notice the streets and the building shapes and the annotation are all Google Map. But we've done Hopewell Borough and what we've added is all the addresses in Hopewell, which turns out to be a bigger job than I anticipated. Um, and you'll notice that the, there are two colors. The red ones are historical locations. So if I hover over them, this is a Blackwell building, this is a Hyde Wood building, etc. And then the blue buildings are uh, places that we don't have historical information on right now. And these uh, numbers also have icons after them. The house looking icon means there are images and the piece of paper looking icon means we have documentation, okay? So this is how we're um, set up to explore history on a map. So let me show you how we can take this further. So one thing we can do is zoom out. Now, if we zoom out, all the numbers would squish together and you couldn't read anything. So as you zoom out, we erase the um, all but the historical numbers. And if you zoom out further, we just hide them all. If you wanna get back, you can just click on the Hopewell icon and go back to where you were. So guess what happens when you zoom in? If you zoom in, the numbers move far, far enough apart so we can also show thumbnails of these buildings. If you zoom in a little more, we can show larger thumbnails. So here you are walking down historical Broad Street, seeing images of the historical buildings as we have them available, um, moving along town. So this is just really handy and useful. And so I welcome further suggestions on things we can do with this. Now, I haven't mentioned the other parts of the display here. So at any point, there's something that's currently selected. Currently, it's the Calvary Baptist Church. It's right in the center of town, so it's the default. So we show a pop-up here with information. We show a thumbnail. Over here on the left, we show a table with information about this uh, site. And on the right, we show images, okay? So if you click in the table, the display updates and everything updates to show this where you've clicked, where you've selected. And the same thing happens if you click on the map. So number 13 here we now know is the library, which was the bank building. So I'll click on that. And here we are. We've selected the library and the table. And then over here are multiple images of the library that we can sort through. And you've seen these already, so I don't have to spend any time on them. So um, also down here are two triangle symbols that mean there's more information. Down here, we identify the image. If you click here and then click view full screen, you get another window. So you can cycle through these in full screen should you want to. And then up at the top where we have the address, if you click that, it drops down and shows the historical information. This is uh, formerly the library building. We got this information from the site survey and you can click view document. So this takes you directly to the site survey information for this address. So in this case, this is the one page summary they did when they were writing the 1000 more summaries and done in July, 1984. And here is a description of the architecture and the evolution of the building. Here is a description of the significance, the cultural significance of the building. And then here are references about the building and you recognize these are maps, okay? So those are some of the kinds of things you can do uh, to explore the site in the history map. 
Um, but we can do more. So for example, we have historical sites and we know when that site was built and we have these images and we have both current day and historic images. So we can use that information. So this control here switches between then and now. So if I click now, by default, I get the current day image when I click on something, which means if I zoom in, I get the current day images of Broad Street. So I can walk down Broad Street, but now I'm doing it and seeing the current buildings that are there. And again, these were shot in the winter, so you can see through the trees and see the building beyond. The other thing you can do is use the date information, as I mentioned. So we can use this date control up here in the top and click and say, I only want to see the images from 1850. So these are the very few buildings that were in Hopewell in 1850, clustered around the old school Baptist meeting house and pretty much on the one side of the street. And they didn't go up to East Broad at all. Then I click forward in time. So I jumped to 1860, a few more buildings, not a whole lot. And then I move one more to 1875 and I'm starting to fill in here on East Broad Street and I also see a bunch of buildings show up over here. So what happened? What happened and the same thing happened in Pennington, the train came. So the train line came down here, these buildings were built the, train, the second train station, the current train station was built here. And so the town started filling in. So if I move forward in time some more, you can see that filling in process to 1910. So this is the fun kinds of things you can do by having a map interface to explore. And just one more thing, um, there's a, over here on the right, there's an options button. And here you can see by source. So I can see what are the maps, uh, what are the buildings that show in the 1894 map. And oh, by the way, the table updates to show just those buildings. So if I sort by date, this is how Hopewell filled in from roughly 1750 through 1850. These are the few buildings that we know of in Hopewell in that time period before it started filling in and before the railroad came, okay? So that's the grand, unbelievably fast tour of the website, but I hope you've shown you how you can experiment and have fun with it. And I wanna go back and conclude and actually answer some of the questions that were asked earlier. So um, this is what we're up to and what we're doing. Uh, so we started middle of last year because of those house tours and started developing the resource guides. Um, by fall, we had collected a, a large group of files and had them online. Uh, by the end of the year, we were starting to build up the image archives. Then in the first quarter of this year, we worked on the history map and the current day images. And you can see the number of images has just exploded because um, more and more sources have been providing us with material. And now we're actually able to start exploring history, which is a little bit. And we're, we were also starting to work with groups, for example, in Pennington and Titusville to try to expand coverage of other areas, though uh, the last two months have sort of slowed that down, as you may have guessed. And then finally, yes, um, how can you contribute? Um, the first thing is contribute materials. If you have images, postcards, etc., if you have pamphlets and histories and other useful information, or if you know where to find information, please contact us. If you have stuff you just want to get rid of, we will come and take it away. If you have stuff that you're willing to share, we will happily scan it, and then you still have it. If you have stuff that you think might be uh, suitable for archiving, we will work with the museum and the historical society, for example, to um, figure out the best thing to do with your materials. And we've done all of that. We've done all of that already. 
In addition, uh, people are helping out by contributing their knowledge. So we have a bunch of images of Harberton and Titusville and Pennington that I don't off know off the top of my mind what the address of that image is. But if you can help us and tell us that, that would be great. If you can identify properties on maps, if you can clarify other details. Um, we had one volunteer who uh, got a timeline of Hopewell Borough going. We'd love to do similar timelines for other areas. Or if you're interested in your own project, if you want to research um, your family house or something like that, we'd be happy to help, we'd be happy to support it, and we'd be happy to get that material online and shared as well. So, uh, Kim, that's, that's the bottom line there and trying to answer questions. So thank you all so very much for connecting in and uh, sharing this, and I will hang around and answer questions. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Doug. I'm going to start my video if you wouldn't mind starting your video. Yep. And it's yep. here. Yep. I'll turn off the screen share. Just let me get a drink. Hang on. Okay. Okay. There we go. Thank you so much. That was very fascinating. And a lot of people were very impressed by the amount of material that you've you know, just put together in such a short amount of time. <laughs> well, it was a lot of people helping, yeah. Yeah, there, um, there were some people who suggested maybe having a link on the site um, asking people if, you know, they want to volunteer or- Right, good um, point. Or listing maybe perhaps ways in which yep. you would need help. And then we've had several people asking about Mount Rose. Yes. Yeah, we have one map of Mount Rose. One of the atlases did a close-up of Mount Rose. And um, the library had a, a Mount Rose talk, but I have not been able to collect Mount Rose, additional Mount Rose material on the site at this point, but I'd be happy to work with people who have that kind of material. That'd be great. Okay, well, for those who asked, Doug is willing, so. <laughs> you know where, yes. We're always open to material, ad, yes. actually, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, is there a way at all right now on the site? I didn't see to actually contact you via the site, or if there's anyone who would like to get in touch with you, how would you mm -hmm. suggest? The bottom of every page on the site has my email address, so just go right there. All right. Shoot Doug an email. Yes, exactly. Suggestions and got to start somewhere, right? Yes, yeah. offers for help. Uh huh. I don't see any other questions, but I do see okay. a lot of comments from people mm -hmm. who have expressed their fascination with the project and just how impressed they are, and just wanted to thank you for putting this together for the community. Yeah, it's fun when I show people the image gallery, they get lost in there. And when I show them the map, they get lost in that as well. So it's, it's been lots of fun. Thank you. It's, you know, it's just incredible when you have a group of volunteers who are passionate about something. And mm -hmm. that's how I feel about the Pennington Public Library too, mm -hmm. how much you can accomplish. And so I'm very proud to be part of this community. And it just looks marvelous. Thank you so much, Doug. Oh, thank you, Kim, for letting us do this. Yeah. This is great. Someone also, Buzz, commented mm -hmm. how fabulous this is. He says he grew up in Hopewell and his mother was a principal of Hopewell Grammar School in the 50s. Oh, yeah. And his grandfather was mayor of Hope in the early 30s. Um, he's interested in John Hart. And of course, mm -hmm. we know that a lot of people in town are interested in a lot of um, figures in, in our history as well, so. Yeah, I think we've collected enough material yeah. to do a similar <laughs> thing on schools in Hopewell. Oh, it would be really interesting. We have a bunch of pictures, but again, if people have records, we'd be very, very interested in seeing them. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, the library. Mm -hmm. Our library, we do get questions from people who call about the history of schools. So that, yeah. that's definitely a topic of interest. Yeah. Bob wants to know how the project is funded and if he can contribute. Yeah, currently it's just us folks. There's no official organization, so 
we're not worrying about funding right now. We're just making it happen. And we'll figure that out later, basically. So okay. thank you very much for the offer. It's very kind of you. Yeah, something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, thank you also to Bob Warsnack and the Hopewell Museum and the Hopewell Valley Historical Society for collaborating with us. I know that whenever the Pennington Public Library collaborates with the Hopewell Museum and Hopewell Valley Historical Society, we get a huge turnout. Um, we make things happen, so it's you know always a pleasure. I think Bob Warsnack, are you there? You want to add something? Yes, I do. Uh, thanks, thanks, Kim. Um, I just, I'm curious, uh, now that we're hosting uh, this virtually, I'm curious if there are people that are outside of the area that are attending. Um, you know, what, one thing that we're thinking about is, you know, potentially when we do get back to having live meetings, maybe we could have some sort of virtual aspect as well. And so I'm just trying to gauge, gauge this to see um, if we have anybody from far away or, you know, or not that far away, but far away that they would be able to make it to our, make it here. Yes, we are interested. Uh, Patricia commented, yes, she's tuning in from Washington, D.C. And she great. would love that. That's wonderful. Oh, great. Yes. I'm, I'm from Maryland originally, so I'm very familiar with D.C. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of friends in D.C. So, hi, Patricia in D.C. And I, I know for some of our other programs, we've had people join from Pennsylvania mm -hmm. um, who used to live in Pennington and we're very thankful that they could tune in virtually with us. Any other locations outside of even Hopa? Oh, someone's, someone's in from San Diego. <laughs> and there's kidding. someone from Tampa. Oh, you're kidding. That's amazing. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Someone's tuning in from Lawrence Township, a former Hopewell resident. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this reminds me of um, one of the libraries I worked at. We had a, uh, a book initiative where it was called Pass the Book. And people mm -hmm. would, they had a map with each book. They gave out, we gave out books and each book had a little code and you go in and then you would register where you're from when you read the book and you can pass the book to someone else and there this is a library I was in, in Maryland and the, the one of our books ended up in Australia so <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's incredible when you reach out oh, the connection um, here's someone who says that he's reaching out from Southern Pines um, North Carolina wow. wow so so and and there are people who want to forward you more information about finding people with information outside of the immediate local area. So there's great, great interest, mm -hmm. great interest. Um, That'd be wonderful. We have someone tuning in. Richard, he's a historian at Riverview Cemetery. Yeah. And he said of interest, Fowler is interned here. Mm. Yeah, at Riverview Cemetery. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much everyone for joining us. Um, this has been great. Do you have any other comments, Doug, Bob? No, we're good. Thank you very much. Yeah, really I really appreciate you doing yeah. this, Kim. Oh no, it's my pleasure. It's just, yeah. you know, it, it's so nice because since we're all at home, you know, I feel this is a way I can still keep in touch with everyone and mm -hmm. feel connected with everyone. So this is great. Um, there's a question about the recording, but it will be posted. I am currently working on the recordings right now. I mentioned that this is pretty new to the library, so there's some editing involved and some logistical. Um, aspects I have to figure out, but I will let everyone know when postings are available for recordings. And I also wanted to mention tomorrow, the library is hosting a TED Talk viewing and discussion with Suzanne Gallagher, one of our volunteers. She is great. And also with Tara Russell, our other librarian. And if you have an interest in that, please feel free to give me an email. I can sign you up for that. The um, topic of it is uh, about the Sistine Chapel, yeah. so, virtual travel again. Mm -hmm. And then Tara and I are also very excited about, uh, we're having an upcoming online documentary film series that we're planning. And the first film in the series 
will um, be viewable starting on Sunday, May 24th, and it will be viewable for that entire week. And the movie is called Just Eat It, and it follows filmmakers and food lovers, Jen and Grant, as they, they go into the issue of food waste from farm through retail and all the way back to their own fridge. Um, and then after that whole week where you can view it, we are going to have a discussion with Dr. Xenia Morin from Rutgers University's Department of Plant Biology. And that discussion will be Sunday, May 31st at three. So um, Tara and I and folks at the library, we just love um, online film discussions, in-person film discussions, and just film discussions in general. So we're very excited about um, the new series we're having. And I think that is it for me. And I hope everyone is staying safe and uh, hopefully we'll see you again on Zoom and have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Pachka. Be safe, everybody. <laughs>